Okay, so this last video is going to be all about um, modifying the group, the grub boot screen, which you can see at the moment, which has dis actually disappeared, um, so that we add an entry to enable us to boot into Windows, and this will save us having to use the BIOS or the UEFI firmware to um, uh, to do that. You know, having to remember to press F12 or F2 or the DEL button, whichever method your own um, motherboard uses to access uh, the boot properties of the machine. Um, and obviously it makes it a lot simpler. It being a menu, you can just select, you know, at your will, which which um, operating system you want to boot into. So to do that, let's start by becoming the root. And we need to go to the file that controls the um, grub menu system which is in forward slash boot forward slash grub and the file is called grub.cfg and if you recall this was a very basic um, uh, configuration file for grub where it sets a couple of parameters first it's a bit irrelevant at the moment because there's only one entry in the menu so it doesn't matter that that's the default it is the default by the fact that it is the only one there's a timeout of five seconds so again it, this doesn't really matter and it's default is quite short because there is only one option you're either going to boot or you're just going to leave it leave it at the um at the, the the one menu option that there is then we've got a couple of lines to configure the menu entry in fact this is global for the whole file where it is at the moment and we're going to have to move this because um, the first command in this mod, it's insert module for and it's telling grub that we're going to use a partition that's got an ext file system, not just x2 but it could be 3 or 4 and obviously Windows wouldn't use that file system and the next line after that it, it tells grub what partition we're using and obviously the menu entry code block is all about the um, the display of the option and how we want that that particular option to to start how we instigate that that particular operating system so maybe the first thing to do is to modify this menu entry so that we tell it specifically um, about um, the partition and the file system like I say these two entries are global so if we add more menu entries assumptions are going to be made because we've told grub about the partitions that are going to boot and they're going to be wrong because obviously not every single operating system is going to be the same partition so what we'll do first is we'll just edit this and just copy in fact we can do this with via by doing dd to delete the line and shift p to paste it in and repeating that DD and shift P saves us typing all again and then we can just go back to insert mode and put a tab in front and just get rid of that line so now this means that there's no default partition type or partition number sorry file system type or partition specified it's um this is explicitly uh, setting X and root number ht1 gpt7 for this entry which is for our linux from scratch 9.1 so the next thing we need to do is add another menu entry but this time for our windows to boot and we can give that any description we like we call it windows 10 we call it windows 10 boot or you know whatever you want to call it make sure it's in the quotes and then open the curly bracket to indicate you're opening a new block of uh, code if you like and then we need to um, tell it which oops, which um, file system you're using now we don't actually um, boot from the operating system um, with Windows 10 um, it boots directly from the um, EFI partition the ESP partition which is partition one if I remember we can double check that if we just save this temporarily and do F disk minus L you can see where it says under device heading dev SDA one 
the type of that partition is the EFI system and that's the um, EFI system that the whole system uses so we've got it currently mounted at the moment you can see there dev SDA1 at the bottom we've got it mounted inside the boot partition so we've got access to that um, while we're in Linux from scratch because that's where the Linux from scratch uh, boot firmware is um, or rather more specifically the grub firmware is located to allow us to boot Linux from scratch um, so yeah so we've got to specify SDA1 and we use a, a special Microsoft binary that's in there to, to boot Windows so we need to specify that now so if we get the grub menu configuration file up again so we have to tell you what partition uh, uh, sorry what file system the partition uses and that's a fat type so just insmod fat and then we need to tell it what partition um, the ESP partition is so it's on HDA1 uh, sorry HD1 as before but it's the first partition so it's GPT1 and then the command to load it because we're basically loading another bootloader we need to use a command called chain loader in grub and then we specify the, the file of, of that um, bootloader so this is the bootloader that Windows uses so this is why we have to specify the EFI partition because Windows is booted from this bootloader in Linux is a little bit different because we just tell it directly what kernel we want to load and we load the kernel directly so that's why we don't use chain loader um, in Linux so we specify this by specifying the path now in theory although um, if I go back um, and show you the partition yeah it's in uppercase here uh, the EFI partition so this EFI boot EFI is our own partition we've used as a container for the EFI partition then everything under this directory is effectively the root of that partition so we need to specify the second EFI because that's basically the root and then you'll notice that the directories there are in upper mixture of uppercase and lowercase well because this is fat fat doesn't know anything about um, case uppercase or lowercase um, and in theory it uses uppercase all the time so when we're uh, modifying the grub file it doesn't really matter about the case of the directories but if you want to be consistent then um, stick the EFI in capitals it, like I say it doesn't really matter uh, the next directory we need to put in is my, Microsoft and again on disk that looks like a capital M with the rest of the, let the letters in the word Microsoft in lowercase and then the word boot in capital B again it's not necessary but if you want to be absolutely correct then you can put them in as I've typed them in on the screen then the binary that's loaded is called bootmgfw.efi so that's the bootloader that Windows uses boot mgfw.efi and then lastly we need to remember to close that block you see Vim has um, highlighted the, the fact that we've done that now there are a couple well there's several there's, there's many options in Grub we can do quite a lot of customization for it but I'll just show you a couple more um, items we can add as menu entries which can be quite useful um, the first one is an option to allow us to enter the, the well, I keep on calling it the BIOS, it's not technically a BIOS, but the um, motherboard firmware, the UEFI firmware. So we can add that as a menu entry. And to do that, obviously, we type menu entry again and then we give it a description, something like um, oops, reboot into UEFI firmware something like that and it's just a simple command oh sometimes I like to put in BIOS because like I say um, you know, I've been dealing with BIOSes for 30 odd years or so and uh, 
it's hard to break habits. When I look at UEFI firmware, I think, well, firmware is the sort of thing that goes on something like a network card or a graphics card or something, and it takes me a few seconds to realise what the UEFI firmware is or what it relates to in, in, in old money, if you like. So, yeah, there's just one simple command for this. We'll just tell grub fw setup and that will take us into the um, uefi firmware and that's all we need for that then the other menu entry i'm going to show you is to allow us to shut down so for example we might have turned on the machine and think for whatever reason i didn't really want to turn the machine on i'll just turn it off rather than let it boot have to wait for, wait for it to boot log in and do a proper shutdown so it's just a little convenience thing. Probably wouldn't use it that often, but it's there. So we can put in description something like this, turn off this PC. I'll turn this PC off and be slightly better English. And, oh, I forgot to open the bracket for the block up there. So I'll add that in and open bracket here. And we can do something clever like um, put a message up because the the machine doesn't shut shut down instantly. It's it's pretty fast, you know, maybe a second or so. But in case it's an older machine, uh, it might take a little a while. When I say a little while, maybe a few seconds to shut down. We can put a message to the screen just as it's doing so, saying shutting down PC, for example, something like that. And then the command to actually do the shutdown is simply halt and then just close the bracket. And that's it. As I say, there's many options with Grub. You can read up about them. There's, there's other, there's ones for rebooting the machine. Even um, I can't remember the command for that. It's probably reboot, but I couldn't really see much point in having that on the uh, Grub menu when you've just literally turn the machine on a reboot it would just cycle it again and bring it back up the menu within a few seconds so I couldn't really see the point of that one so I wouldn't wouldn't add that one myself so let's save that so all we need to do now is just to reboot the machine so I'm just logged out I'm going to do control delete I could have typed reboot at the prompt doesn't matter and hopefully we'll get a modified grub boot menu come up when the machine has started up again so there you go we've now got four options um, the default set to Linux because that's the first entry and it was set to zero and these are indexed by zero so that would be zero Windows would be one the reboot option would be two and the um, turn off the PC would be three. Obviously, you can have fun here with somebody. You could set their own default if you had access to the machine to the reboot one, and the machine just continue reboot and reboot and reboot with the default. So, uh, yeah, a bit of fun. Um, so, let's boot into Linux again to make sure this first option still works. And it does. So, let's go back in there and change the um, menu options because you might want to, I'm going to leave the default at zero because I, I'm going to be wanting to boot into Linux more than I'm in Windows and on this machine but obviously if you use your machine for Windows 10 more you'll want to change it to one in this case if you put th these options these menu entries can go in any order so for example you put Windows 10 at the top then that is now index zero not one um, but as as they are as I've as they as I've put them in on the screen, Linux is zero, Windows is one, the reboot is two, and turn PC off is three. So I'll leave that default to zero. Uh, the timeout, you might want to increase that, um, being there's a few more options, there's a bit more to read, so you don't want to have the timeout so short that um, you're not giving the user uh, time enough to read and digest what's on the screen. So you might want to up that to 10, maybe 15 or 20 seconds even especially if you add more options to, to the menu. But I'm going to leave that as five, but it's, it's there to be changed if you need to. So let's now reboot and test the Windows option 
test that that can actually reboot. So I'm going to reboot again. And there we've got the menu again. So I'm going to select the Windows 10 option and press enter. And there you go, Windows is booted. So that, that option's working successfully. Just wait for this to load and I'll come out of it. So I'll just reboot this again. We'll just check the other two options now. So I'm going to check the third one, which is the option to boot into the UEFI firmware. So let's press that one. There's been no errors, so I assume it's doing something. The machine shut down and it's restarting again. And hopefully it will restart into the UEFI firmware program. Yep, and there it is. It's gone straight in there. So that's obviously working, so let's exit that. The machine will now cycle, recycle again and uh, reboot. And I'll end up by testing the shutdown option. So turn this PC off, press enter. It says shutting down PC, and I can vouch for the fact that the lights have gone off on the PC and it's all quiet. So that's the end of this series of uh, videos about installing Linux from scratch 9.1 but thank you very much for watching and if you've enjoyed the video please click the thumbs up and if you want to hear about more videos like this especially BLFS 9.1 beyond Linux from scratch 9.1 which I will be doing um, in maybe a week or two week or two's time uh, please click the sub subscribe button to uh, get notification when those videos appear online. Thank you very much. Goodbye.